So let's go over a myth. Health insurance will pay for all of our short-term and long-term care health insurance needs. Uh, the fact is generally neither Medicare nor private Medicare supplement insurance nor individual health insurance or even employer-sponsored group plans will pay for long-term care insurance. It won't pay for a long-term care situation, I should say. Uh, let's do an overview of typical health insurance coverage for skilled and custodial care. So your typical coverage, uh, say on your individual health plan or your group plan, uh, if you go into a skilled nursing facility, coverage is usually limited to 100 and 120 days per person. Uh, home health care will pay a limit between 5000 25000 per calendar year. Uh, as far as assisted living facility and custodial care, there is no coverage under your group plan or your uh, individual medical plan. So let's go over some Medicare criteria. Now you're probably wondering what Medicare is. I'll quickly tell you the difference between Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, Medicare, everybody has Medicare and you get it when you turn 65. Uh, otherwise you're disabled. Disabled people have it as well. There's Medicare Part A, B, C, and D. Everybody has A. You get that when you turn 65. You pay for Part B if you want Part B separate. And that's been changing year to year. I think Part B is about $98 a month now. Uh, Part C would be uh, your your choice for your supplement side if you want a supplement or <clears throat> a Medicare Advantage plan. And then D is for drugs. So A pays your hospital, B pays your doctor, C is your choice for your insurance, and D is your drug. So ABC, that's Medicare. Medicaid is welfare. It's for people that are uh, poor, poverty, they need help. So Medicaid welfare, think of aid, Medicaid, Medicare. So that's different. So under basic Medicare, this is how they work. You have to have a related three-day hospital stay prior to admission and the, it must be a skilled nursing facility, Medicare certified. The care has to meet the criteria for skilled rather than custodial. And Medicare pays the first 20 days in a, a nursing home. They'll pay the first 20 days. Days 21 through 100, you pay $128. They pick up the rest. After day 100, it's all on your own. You have to pay everything then. So then you're probably wondering, well, what's the average cost of a nursing home in a year? Because I can probably pay that out of pocket. Uh, no, most people cannot pay an average cost uh, nursing home. The average cost nationwide, uh, this is this is maybe a year or two old since I last looked this up, but the average cost is 66000 for one year, two years, 132000 five years, 330000 If you're going to pay that out of pocket, um, you know, you have to be rich. That's plain and simple. You have to be rich, but... If you're not rich, you need the insurance. And if you are rich, why would you not have the insurance? Because then you can just protect your wealth. So, 66,000 a year, one year. How many people make 66,000 a year? All right. So, what are the sources for long-term care payments? Like I said before, Medicaid is welfare. 44% of people are in Medicaid. 29% of people are paying for it out of pocket. 17% are within that 100 days of Medicare. Um, are they getting public funds? 10% of people have insurance. So you can see why the Deficit Reduction Act, you can see why the government wants people to have coverage. They, want, they don't want to take on this risk anymore. They want to say, hey, get your act together. So under a Medicaid estate recovery program, this is the same as the Deficit Reduction Act, um, federal mandated program, they try to seek repayment for long-term care Medicaid benefits. The money that, the money recovered from an estate and a lien on a house. So they'll put a lien on your house to collect the funds because you didn't have long-term care. They need to get money back to give to the nursing home. Uh, Medicaid receipts of any age who live in a nursing home may have all benefits costs recovered. Exactly. 45% uh, of people, not to just throw out statistics here, but 45% of Americans know somebody that is in a long-term care situation. Can you think of somebody that's in a long-term care situation? A grandparent, a parent, a relative? maybe a friend or an acquaintance. 12.8 um, million Americans now require long-term care. And this is kind of crazy. 3% are children, but 40%, a lot of people don't think about this, but 40% are under the age 65. 57% are over 65.
like I said before, you know, an accident, an injury, a complication from surgery, you can be under 65. You know, it happens. So uh, causes, fractures, falls, diabetes, stroke, emphysema, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, injury, accident, complications in surgery, like I just said before. Those are just some uh, causes for a long-term care situation. So health insurance policies. All right, so everybody has, uh, you, know, you might not have health insurance, but most of the time you have a major med, an HMO, a health maintenance organization, a PPO, a preferred provider organization. Uh, sometimes you might have a, a cost sharing plan. Um, you might have group coverage. Uh, you might have Medicare. You might have a supplement. You might have a private fee for service plan. A Medicare Advantage plan is what that would be. Uh, some people have HSA plans. They have a high deductible plan, and they commingle that with a savings account, which is a health savings account. Uh, you can, those those are phenomenal accounts. You can do many things different with them, and uh, you know, save for your health. Uh, and long-term care insurance. So those are the difference in health care. Those are more of your short-term, whereas long-term care is the only insurance policy that pays for an extended amount of services, whereas your health pays for a shorter amount. So uh, people have dental plans commingled, eye vision plans commingled with their plans. So uh, those are the difference in your health insurance. You're probably wondering, okay, Kyle, so I, I, I'm getting the long-term care. I understand the Deficit Reduction Act. How can you help me? Well, it's my job to promote the education to make sure you're protected. I select the best policies that are available. I go over benefits, costs. I go over the stability of the company. I want to make sure that the the insurance company is sound. I'm not going to put you with some fly-by-night company. Um, I've been experienced in long-term care uh, for about five years now. I've been looking into it. I've studied hard. I've worked with many of the top producers in the nation. Um, you know, I we have attorneys. We go through the legal stuff. You know, I'm talking to folks that are going into long-term care situations you're going to nursing homes um, you know we're trying to get the best benefit for the buck here so um, you know I'd like to have you as a client I'd like to go over your situation I'd like to uh, make sure I, I give you value I try to bring value to every client I have because uh, you know that's that's how I keep my business running if I can give you value and you can give me value in your business or in what you do you know I'd, I'd buy from you any day so but I, I will keep in contact with you. That's one of my main things. A lot of these people, they sell policy and they run away. Well, you want to make sure that you, a person checks in every once in a while. And you want to make sure that things are still up to par. So that's kind of my role. And, uh, you know, when I sit down with clients, this is one of the first things I go over. Let's look at your estate. Let's look at to make sure you have everything protected. Do you have your auto? Good. Do you have home? Good. Do you have life, health? Good. Do you have long-term care? A lot of people don't have that. We want to build walls around our estate. And our estate is our home our savings, our investments, and our income. We want to protect these things because these are things we would like to have in our retirement years. These are things we'd like to give to our beneficiaries when we pass away. So a lot of people all get their home insured, their auto. Um, you know, they Some people don't have the health. Some people don't even look at life insurance. We can structure it so it doesn't have to cost you much at all and it'll save your savings and your investments. So it's just some basic financial planning. It's amazing how many people don't do basic financial planning, which is the road to wealth. So, um, you know, we got to look at the long-term care. Got to look at your your different situations here. The most important reason to purchase long-term care insurance, though, is to protect your assets, avoid dependency on your family. Do you want your kid? Do you want your husband, your wife, uh, your child changing your diaper if you're in a long-term care situation? Do you want them bathing you? I don't. Most people I know don't want that. So. Uh, you maintain your choice. You have control. You can tell, you can go where you want to go. Medicaid's not going to say you have to go to some small town over here in the middle of uh, Montana or wherever uh, because it's the cheapest. No, you have the control. You have the money. You can say, I want to stay here. I want to go to assisted living. I don't want to go to a nursing home. That's the best reason to have long term care. Uh, you get to choose where you receive your health care coverage. Um, and you can maintain your standard of living. A lot of the policies pay cash up front, uh, you know, cash first policies. So, you know, you get that cash every month in hand and you can spend it how you feel. You can gamble with it if you want. I mean, uh, they don't care. You bought the policy and you're doing with the funds that uh, you feel you need. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, please give me a call, send me an email. Uh, tell me something you'd like to hear in the presentation. I can always redo the presentation. So, uh, let's go over to taxes. And let's look at ways to reduce premium now.